Hello guys, in this video we are going to learn dynamic programming by taking an example of workforce size problem. Here is an outline of my talk. Let us start with the problem description. In the workforce size problem, the scenario is you have a project of a specified time horizon and for this project you have estimated the number of employees that you need in each time period. So now what you know is some estimated number of employees for each time period. Then as a project manager or contractor, you would like to answer this very important question. How many employees to have in each time period? Now you know the estimated number of employees. If you match the number of employees that you have in each time period to the estimated number of employees, then you will have lots of hiring and firing of the employees. Now lots of hiring and firing of employees is impractical. Usually you would like to have a stable workforce, not too less, not too more. Now if you have too many employees than required, then you are paying extra money on the other hand, if you have less employees than required, then basically you will not meet the demand and you will have a bad reputation. Both of these are not good. So now you have a scenario where you cannot have too much employees or too less employees and changing the workforce size every now and then is also not good. In these scenarios, you would like to come up with a plan of how many employees to have in each time period. And this plan should consider all the costs of hiring, firing and maintaining the employees. And such problem of determining the right number of workers is nothing but the workforce size problem. Now let us see what are the dynamic programming elements for this problem. As we have seen in the first lecture, dynamic programming part 1, the stages for this problem are time periods. In fact, take this as a rule of thumb. Whenever you have time periods, then the stages most probably will be the time periods. For this problem, the states are nothing but the number of employees. And finally, the decision will be whether to hire or fire employees. Now let us take an instance of workforce size problem. Here is the scenario. You have a contractor who estimated the workforce size for the next five weeks as follows. 5 employees in week 1, followed by 7 in week 2, followed by 8 in week 3, followed by 4 number of employees in week 4, and finally 6 employees in week 5. Now as you can see from the problem scenario, there are certain costs for this workforce size problem. If you have one excess employee, then it will cost you $300 per week per worker. Similarly, if you try to hire an employee, then it will incur a fixed cost of $400 plus for every worker there will be $200. Now for this problem we assume that the firing cost is negligible. Now one of the assumptions that we make in this scenario is you always try to have minimum workforce. What does it mean? It means we will always try to have workers more than the predicted amount per week. The objective of this workforce problem is to find the number of labors per week such that the total cost of hiring and firing and maintaining excess workers is minimized. Now let us see how we can represent the problem graphically. In this tableau, I am showing week 1 to 5 and the corresponding minimum requirements. Then based on the minimum requirements and our assumption that we will always try to have more number of employees than what is needed. These are the states. Now from this graphical representation, we have a fair idea about the states. And using this idea of states, we can create the tableaus. Here is the tableau for the workforce size problem. And remember, we are following backward recursion. So we are going to start from stage 1 problem, which starts from stage 1 and ends at stage 0. 
Stage 1 corresponds to week number 4 and stage 0 corresponds to week 5. The minimum requirement in week 5 is 6 employees and the minimum requirement in week 4 is 4 employees. So the possible start states could be 4 and above number of employees and possible end state could be 6 or above. But since this is the last week, we do not want to have any excess worker here. Having an excess worker here is meaningless. That is why the end state is 6 and these are the possible start states. Now going from 4 employees in week 4 to 6 employees in week 5 implies you hire 2 persons. And this will cost you some fixed cost and some variable cost. Similarly, going from 5 to 6 will have cost of hiring one employee. Going from 6 to 6 will have no cost. Now going from 7 or 8 to 6 will also have no cost because in this problem we assume there is no firing cost. That's how we fill this table and then the corresponding optimal objective function value and the best end states. And here is the summary of stage 1 problem. Now for the stage 2 problem, which starts from stage 2 and ends in stage 1, the possible start states are 8 number of employees. The possible end states could be 4 or above number of employees. Now, going from 8 to 4 will cost you nothing because all you are doing is firing the employees. But from 4, you have the previous cost of 8 units. Now going from 8 to 5 will cost you nothing because you are just firing the employees. However, you are maintaining one extra employee because the number required here is 4. So you'll have one extra employee. And then maintaining that one extra employee will have some cost. Plus, you have some past cost for state 5 which is 6 units. Similarly, going from 8 to 6 Will, will have no cost of firing. However, you are maintaining two extra employees. Plus, you will have some past cost and same thing goes for 7 and 8. The minimum among them is the optimal objective function and the corresponding best end state is state 6. Here is the summary of stage 2. Now we move to stage 3 problem which starts from stage 3 and ends in stage 2. The start states are 7 or 8 and the end state is 8 only. Now going from 7 to 8 you are actually hiring one guy. So there will be a cost of hiring one guy. Plus for this state you have a previous cost of 6 units. Similarly going from 8 to 8 will have no cost in the current stage. However, there is a previous cost of 6 units and then the optimal cost will be 12 units here and in the next row 6 units. Here is the summary of stage 3 problem and we move to the stage 4 problem. The possible start states could be 5 up to 8 and possible end states could be 7 or 8. Now going from 5 to 7 requires hiring of two employees in the current stage. Plus, for the state 7, you have a previous cost of 12 units. Similarly, going from 5 to 8 will have a current cost of hiring three employees. And for state 8, you have a cost of six units from the previous stage. The optimum will be minimum of these two and then the best end state will be 8. Similarly, you can compute for the next three rows. And here is the summary of the stage 4 problem. Now we move to stage 5 problem. This is the last problem that we are going to solve. At the start you have 0 employees, this is our assumption, and in week 1 you have 5 or above employees and for each of these possible movement here are the costs. For example, going from 0 to 6 you will hire 6 guys and then you are maintaining one extra worker. Plus, for 6 you, are, you also have some past cost which is 17 units. That will be added here. 
same thing goes for 7 8 and now the best or the optimal objective function value will be minimum from all of this that is 33 and the best end state is 5 this is the stage 5 summary and now we can trace the optimal path so from 0 you have 5 employees from 5 you have 8 employees from 8 you have 8 and from 8 you have 6 and from 6 you have 6 employees therefore you have 5 employees in week 1 followed by 8 employees in week 2 followed by 8 employees in week 3 followed by 6 employees in week 4 followed by 6 employees in week 5 so what is the decision that we made here to have 5 employees well we hired 5 employees what about the decision that you made here we hired 3 more guys and then there is no change then here we fired 2 guys and no change and uh, these are the corresponding costs and the total cost is nothing but the sum of all these costs so the optimal plan based on the hiring firing and maintaining extra labors is here have 5 employees in week 1 8 employees in the next 2 weeks and 6 employees in the last 2 weeks this plan is the optimal plan for the given estimated number of employees that is all what I have for the workforce size problem